is the function given below continuous slash differentiable at x equals one. And they define the function g piecewise right over here. And then they give us a bunch of choices. Continuous but not differentiable. Differentiable but not continuous. Both continuous and differentiable. Neither continuous nor differentiable. And like always, pause this video and see if you could figure this out. So let's do step by step. So first let's think about continuity. So for continuity, for g to be continuous at x equals one, that means that g of one, that means that g of one must be equal to the limit as x approaches one of g, of g of x. Well, g of one, what is that going to be? G of one, we're going to fall into this, this case. One minus one squared is going to be zero. So if we can show that the limit of g of x as x approaches one is the same as g of one, is equal to zero, then we know we're continuous there. Well, let's do the left and right handed limits here. So if we do the left-handed limit, limit, and that's especially useful because we're in these different clauses here as we approach from the left and the right-hand side. So as x approaches one from the left-hand side of g of x, well, we're going to be falling into this situation here as we approach from the left as x is less than one. So this is going to be the same thing as that. That's what g of x is equal to when we are less than one as we're approaching from the left. Well, this thing is, is defined and it's continuous for all real numbers. So we can just substitute one in for x and we get this is equal to zero. So, so far, so good. Let's do one more of these. Let's approach from the right-hand side. As x approaches one from the right-hand side of g of x. Well, now we're falling into this case. So g of x, if we're to the right of one, if we're great, values greater than or equal to one, it's going to be x minus one squared. Well, once again, x minus one squared, uh, that is defined for all real numbers. It's continuous for all real numbers. So we could just pop that one in there. You get one minus one squared. Well, that's just zero again. So the left-hand limit, the right-hand limit are both equal zero, which means that the limit is equal, the limit is of g of x as x approaches one is equal to zero, which is the same thing as g of one. So we are good with continuity. So we can rule out all the ones that are saying that they are, it's not continuous. So we could rule out that one and we can rule out that one right over there. So now let's think about whether it is differentiable. So differentiability. So differentiability, all right. Differentiability. Ability. Did I, let's see, that's a long word. Differentiability, all right. Differentiability, what needs to be true here? Well, we have to have a defined limit as x approaches one for f of x minus f of one over, oh, let me be careful, it's not f, it's g of, it's g. So we need to have a defined limit for g of x minus g of one over x minus one. And so let's just try to evaluate this limit from the left and right hand sides. And we could simplify it. We already know that g of one is zero. So that's just going to be zero. So we just need to find the limit as x approaches one of g of x over x minus one, or see if we can find the limit. So let's first think about the limit as we approach from the left-hand side of g of x over x minus, uh, g of x over x minus one. Well, as we approach from the left-hand side, g of x is that right over there. So we, should, we could write this, instead of writing g of x, we could write this as x minus one x minus one over x minus one. And as long as we aren't equal to one, this thing is going to be equal, as long as x does not equal one, x minus one over x minus one is just going to be one. So this limit is going to be one. So that, was, that one worked out. Now let's think about the limit as x approaches one from the right hand side of, once again, I could write g of x minus g of one, but g of one is just zero, so I'll just write g of x over x minus one. Well, what's g of x now? Well, it's x minus one squared. So instead of writing g of x, I could write this as x minus one squared over x minus one. And so as long as x does not equal one, and we're just doing the limit, we're, we're saying as we approach one from the right hand side, well, this expression right over here, you have x minus one squared divided by x minus one. Well, that's just going to be give us x minus one. X minus one squared divided by X minus one is just going to be X minus one. And this limit, well, this expression right over here is going to be continuous and defined for, uh, for sure, all X's that are not equaling one. Actually, let me, 
let me, well, it was, it was before it was this, x minus one squared over x minus one. This thing right over here, as I said, it's not defined for x equals one, but it is defined for anything not, for x does not equal one, and we're just approaching one. And if we wanted to simplify this expression, it would get, we, this would just be, I think I just did this, but I'm just making sure I'm doing it right. This is going to be the same thing as that for x not being equal to one. Well, this is just going to be zero. You could just evaluate when x is equal to one here, this is going to be equal to zero. And so notice, you get a different limit for this definition of the derivative as we approach from the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And that makes sense. This graph is gonna look something like, we have a slope of one, so it's gonna look something like this. And then right when x is equal to one and the value of our function is zero, it looks something like this. It looks something like this. And so the graph is continuous. The graph for sure is continuous, but our slope coming into that point is one, and our slope right when we leave that point is zero. So it is not differentiable over there. So it is continuous, but not, continuous, but not differentiable.